It must have been shocking to Paul the Apostle when the Lord told him that he was sent to the Gentiles. The man who didn't know anything about theology, Peter, was sent to the most theological culture in the world. The theologian of all time was sent to a pagan culture that didn't understand anything about Judaism. It was as if Paul's entire body of knowledge would go unused. I'm similarly being sent by God into a new level. You need to understand, this is the first time I've publicly talked about this. You see, Sacramento is not going to be won by political argument. It's not going to be won by rhetoric. It's not going to be won. That season is important. That mantle belongs on someone. Someone else is going to start a blog. Someone else is going to dissect the, the deception of the, of the virus, of the vaccine, of critical race theory and everything else. Others. But I'm called now to something else. And this is what I'm going to tell you. The way that we're going to defeat the agenda of socialism in Sacramento is when the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised. Somebody help me. Help me. I'm going to tell you a story and I'm going to ask you to be willing. Put your hand over your heart. Say, I'm willing. I have told you the greatest power in the world is the power of the willing. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6 and 7 says these words. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. And let it be that when these signs come to you, that you do as the occasion demands, for God is with you. The one thing that the Sacramento Bee missed, the one thing that it overlooked, the single literary mistake, the glaring journalistic blah, 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 was they forgot about the supernatural. They forgot about the power of God. They forgot that when a child is healed of leukemia, there's no debating. When a limb is restored, there's no debating. When a brain cancer that was there at one moment and it is gone the next, there is no debate. There is no resistance or power before signs and wonders. So real is that, that here's what the Bible says. All great movements begin by the Spirit of God filling someone. They get filled with the Spirit. Finney was filled with the Spirit. John Wesley was filled with the Spirit. Anyone that ever changed the world began by being filled with the Spirit. The Bible says, you will, the Spirit of the Lord, will come upon you and you'll be turned into another man. A man who couldn't is now a man who can. A woman who wouldn't is now a woman that will. When you didn't have the words, now you do. When you didn't have the open door, now you do. When you didn't have the gifts, the skills, the discipline or the power, you were one day a harmless person. The devil wasn't even looking at you. But then the Holy Spirit came on you. Oh, I'm going to say that again. Then the Holy Spirit came upon you. You became the weapon of the hour. You became the thing for which Satan had no resistance. You became the indescribable, the unbelievable, and the unstoppable. And we made no greater crime as a denomination. Our denomination never made a greater crime against God than when it stopped preaching and presenting the baptism of the Holy Spirit in every one of our meetings. 
When we quit doing that, we lost our country because we literally lost God's ability to create weapons. Now, the Bible says you'll be turned into another person. And it said, let it be. You see, that's where the willingness comes in. Look at me. It says, you have got to give this miracle permission. You got to give it permission. Greg Farrington needs to stand before God and say, God, I give you permission to change destiny into something that this city has never seen, that California has never imagined, and that hell is not ready for. A group of spirit-filled believers who will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Give it permission when these signs come to you. Do you honestly believe that last night that God was trying to entertain us with dramatic healings? Do you actually believe that these signs and wonders were a cul-de-sac and in themselves that God was merely saying, I'd like to remind you that I'm real? No. These were signs of things to come. This is the sign of an era that wants to be born. This is the sign of a movement that is shaking off its mediocrity and finding its identity and suddenly is going to understand its strategy. And that's, my friend, when you come to the most dangerous part, do what the occasion demands. I'm sorry, Pastor. I'm sorry. But your idea out there Unlike destiny, their church is not far from here. That still believe in marketing. That still believe in leaving scripture out. That still believe that we're going to have the leave it to beaver good old days come back. When church could be harmless. And church could be innocent. And church could just entertain and, and leave you unstayed. And not bother with discipleship. And hopefully let you get saved on the installment plan. Those days are done. And it wasn't God that ended them. It was the devil who ended it. It's the devil that said, I refuse to allow Christianity to exist. And the first victim of Satan's decision to end Christianity is the end of the lukewarm. They don't have a place. There's nothing there. The innocence is gone. We can't go back. It is time for fire-breathing, Bible-based anointed, Holy Ghost filled soldiers of Jesus. Help me somebody.